Look at the list. I guess we can go ahead and get started because I want to be cognizant of time. So hello everyone and welcome to the SOAR webinar series. Um, we Today we have some folks from Venture Outdoor Leadership who are here to talk with you about um, their programs and services. And so before we get started, we want to give you a couple of housekeeping notes, um, which are also in the chat. But um, just so you know, we can't see you or hear you, so don't worry about that. Um, we won't be used, the chat is not turned on for this, but if you do have questions for the presenters, just use the Q&A function, which you can see at the bottom of the screen, and we will get to those questions um, throughout the presentation. And then um, if you want to return to any of this content, we will have a recording of this session, which will be available on YouTube next week. So um, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Brian and Callie from Venture. And so um, please welcome our presenters. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks to everyone for your interest in our program and just taking the time to check out our webinar. Uh, just, yeah, some quick introductions again of us. Um, so my name is Brian Holcomb. Um, my pronouns are he, him, and his. Uh, and I am the Assistant Director for TRIPS uh, with the Venture Outdoor Leadership Program at UNC Charlotte. And a little bit about how I got into this line of work. Um, I was part of an outdoor program as an undergraduate up at the University of Richmond. And it was just a really um, big positive experience for me in terms of socially and in terms of having uh, a program that helped build my leadership skills. And I just really wanted to give that back to uh, current UNC Charlotte students. Hello everyone, my name is Callie Allman. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Uh, my role at UNCC is the Assistant Director for Challenge Course in Team Building. And I started back when I was an undergrad as well. I worked at a summer camp in the summers, and then I worked at UNC Greensboro at a program called Team Quest, which is an experiential education and challenge courses facility. Uh, so I worked there all through college and after college, and then went and got my master's and love working with student facilitators and working with groups and seeing growth. And like Brian said, wanted to give back to other students. So here I am at UNCC and I love it. Awesome. So we also just wanted to, in general, acknowledge the challenge of doing and being part of a virtual presentation, um, as well as the challenges of a pandemic. Um, so, so just a quick disclaimer about the programming and the presentation that we're going to do is that uh, we'll be discussing our traditional programming and obviously not all of that might be able to run exactly as, as um, we traditionally run it, um, but we're gonna do everything that we can to run as many of our programs as close to traditionally as possible. Um, so um, we'll also be giving updates on exactly what our programming will be looking like for the fall. And you'll be able to um, check out our website, which we'll share at the end of the presentation. Um, and and uh, there's basically a way to sign up for those updates as we, as we go on into the semester. Uh, yeah, but just the goal of this presentation is just really to give you a basic introduction to our program, kind of help you understand like what ways you can get involved and at what levels you can get involved. And finally, just what are some of those immediate steps that you can do today uh, to kind of connect with us. Um, all right. So uh, Venture Retro Leadership, um, as you can probably tell from our introductions, we are a leadership development program at UNC Charlotte. And we work with students, faculty, staff and um, the community alike. Awesome, and a little bit about our mission. So at Venture Outdoor Leadership, we provide transformative group experiences through tailored challenges and guided reflection. So if you come to one of our uh, programs, if you come on any of our trips or participate in a challenge course program with a group, then you will notice that all of these things, you know, we have tailored experiences depending on the group that shows up, we want to challenge you physically, mentally, and emotionally. And then we also reflect with you and help with that growth as well. So it's a little about our mission. And then there's a few uh, different ways you can get involved. So we're not necessarily a club. We're kind of an organization on campus. We're a division with full-time staff and student leaders. So that's really cool. So there's a few different ways you can get involved with that. So you can study within some of our academic courses in the kinesiology department. You can participate in some of our trips or come out to the challenge course with a group that you're a part of. Or you can lead, so you can become a student leader with us. And we'll go over all three of these um, in depth as we go through this presentation. Great. So yeah, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive into kind of each of those areas so you understand a little bit more of like what's involved, as Callie alluded to. So, um, so the Venture full-time staff, including both of us, 
teach academic courses in outdoor adventure leadership, which are housed within the kinesiology department. You can take just one participant level class, like introduction to rock climbing, backpacking, whitewater kayaking, or you can actually even pursue an 18 credit minor in outdoor adventure leadership. So all these classes are experiential in nature. Uh, we actually do go rock climbing in rock climbing class and we get on the challenge course and challenge course activities class and, and facilitation. So um, one other big thing to note if you're starting to get interested in doing some classes with us is that all of our classes are by authorization only uh, and that's instructor authorization. So you'll want to email the instructor of record um, before you can actually register for that class. And really that's just our way of making sure that we prioritize authorizing uh, minors to take the classes so that they can stay on track to graduate on time. Um, and these classes do fill up fast, but we have intentionally left spaces open for one class, which is really our biggest kind of feeder class into the program, um, which is called Introduction to Outdoor Adventure. And this would definitely be the best place to start if you're um, getting interested in getting involved. You'll definitely want to email Kristen Coffey, who's um, one of our full-time staff and the professor for that class. And her email is kristen.coffey at uncc.edu um, if you are interested. And I would definitely recommend doing that um, as soon as possible, because again, the classes do fill up fast. Uh, if you know, you're interested in getting involved, but maybe your schedule's already pretty fill, filled up, excuse me, full for the semester, um, in early October is actually when classes become visible and available for authorization. So maybe mark your calendar um, to reach out to us again in, in early October for spring semester classes. So in addition to the academic side, um, maybe you are an engineering major and you know that your schedule is going to be chock full of classes already, um, but you still want to get involved with us on more of a participant basis. So there are a ton of different ways um, to get involved um, on a participant level. So we offer uh, adventure trips um, that typically in a given semester will go off campus um, regionally um, and include things like rock climbing, caving, as you can see, uh, Julia in that picture there. Um, we also do day hikes and backpacking trips, as well as whitewater rafting and kayaking. And these trips are open to beginners. You do not need to have any previous experience to participate. Um, and they're led primarily by students uh, who are really passionate about sharing the outdoors with others and really teaching what they know, as well as really building a positive and supportive community. These trips don't typically, I'm sorry, they do typically have a cost, but they are more affordable than if you were to do them yourself. Um, so for example, to do a, a day of caving or a day of rock climbing is about 35 to $40, um, which you know, might sound steep at first when you consider that that includes transportation from UNC Charlotte and back. Um, it includes any specialized equipment rentals that you would need. We like to say we can provide everything except for your footwear and your underwear, but everything else we can outfit you with. So if it's a climbing trip, rock climbing harnesses, helmets, the ropes, all of that equipment we are going to provide for no additional cost. Um, and then meals during the program as well. So, so that, that, um, that's why we say it's really more affordable than if you were to try to put a program on like that yourself with your friends. And finally, just like our academic classes, the spaces are limited um, for those trips. We usually have um, just permitting restrictions that keep us to somewhere between 10 and 15 participants based on the sort of trip we're doing. So again, signing up early is gonna be the key, the key takeaway for that. Uh, Venture also manages an indoor rock climbing wall that is located in the Student Activity Center. So that is our um, basketball stadium as well. Um, and the wall, we do share it with the other programs. So pick up basketball, um, uh, volleyball, things like that. But we do try to open the wall two to three times per week for three hours per session. So that's just a great um, just source of community, a way to build your skills, learn to belay. Again, our wall is facilitated by student staff members who are going to welcome you in if you're, especially as a first timer, um, set you up with everything you need to know and teach you how to belay if you haven't yet um, learned that skill so that you can do it safely. 
And we typically do post our open dates for the climb wall on our website. Workshops and events. Uh, this is another area of involvement, maybe the climbing wall. Uh, climbing and get, doing heights isn't necessarily your thing yet. Um, and maybe your weekends are, are spoken for. Well, we also offer like programming during the weeks. So um, those are always gonna be educational in nature uh, and just a, a low in, lower investment maybe way to expand your skills and get involved with that outdoor community. So some examples of some of those workshops, um, intro to camping. Um, we actually have a student who's hiking the Colorado Trail. So we're hoping that he's gonna present a little bit about his experience and if anyone's ever thought about doing a long hike like the Appalachian Trail or something like that, he's gonna kind of present about his experience. Um, we've also done team building workshops in the past. Where we've just gotten a group of people together and just given them a chance to get to know one another and make connections. And, um, and again, yeah, all of these are just gonna be a great way to kind of engage in that community and meet other students. Um, you might see a peanut sighting. That is my cat who's making her appearance. <laughs> um, we're also planning to do some trail cleanups this fall. Um, so we have a greenway that runs right through campus. And so one of our programs or our events is also going to be a greenway cleanup. Um, we're really looking forward to that. And these workshops and events are typically free of cost. All right, last participation note here. So we also have a high and low ropes uh, challenge course on campus. You can see the high ropes course there in that slide. Um, again, right on campus, which a lot of people, you are ahead of the curve because a lot of people don't even realize that until they graduate or about to graduate. That it's like, wait, there was a challenge course right on campus and we didn't know about it. So, um, so this is just a great um, resource and obviously Callie can speak more to it if there are questions. But um, student leaders are also our facilitators up on the course. Uh, and the challenge course is for organized groups. So academic programs, athletic teams, fraternities and sororities, clubs and organizations. We'll, we'll work with everybody out there on the course. And we just love the kind of the transformation with the groups that happen when they're out there. Because when you're up 20, 30 feet off the ground and you're relying on your team, you are seeing just significant increases in trust and teamwork um, as a result of that involvement on the course. So um, it's really interesting to see kind of how the group transforms from when they come in and everyone's a little nervous to how everyone is just you know, they've faced some fears together, but they've supported one another and they've built that team um, even stronger than before. And this is actually our highest volume area of programming. And Callie is definitely gonna be, again, your go-to person um, if you want to bring your group out to the course. All right, now we're on to lead. Wonderful, so this is a really wonderful way to get involved with a, with a organization and a deeper level. So we're going to talk about leading. So most of our programs and trips are led by students. So our student leaders called VOLTS. Um, so these are students that have received extra training um, and gone through different courses to help us lead. And then you'll see our full-time staff are also on these trips and programs as well. So to become a VOLT, you don't have to have any prior experience. We love to see prior experience, but it's definitely not required. We're just looking for students who are passionate about developing their leadership skills and facilitating others' growth. So if you feel like that's you, you can maybe start to think about getting into becoming one of our VOLTs and one of our student leaders. It's a lot of fun, A. B, it's also a great resume builder. So it provides you with a lot of leadership skills and also a lot of decision-making skills. So like I said, we provide all the a lot of the training, most of the training, all the training. Um, and it's just a great way to learn more about yourself, learn more about your community, um, learn different both technical skills, but also how to work with others and teach others and lead others. The one prerequisite we have to become a vault is to take Intro to Outdoor Adventures, which is offered every semester and it is credit bearing. I think, Brian, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's three credit hours. Uh, I believe it's still two credits at this point. Two. Yeah. Perfect. So it's two. Or we also, if you, like Brian said before, if you're already maxed out on your credits, you don't think you can take any others, we do have Vault Foundations, which is offered every spring, and it is non-credit bearing, so you wouldn't get any credit hours for that. Uh, after you complete one of those courses, uh, you can apply to become a Vault, which is really fun and exciting. You have to join a wonderful community of other Vaults and join kind of the, the family. We have a nice, so, uh, Brian's going to talk about one of our, uh, our Volt graduates. 
Yes, so you can meet Haley um, and her dog in that picture right there. <laughs> but Haley's just a, a great example of a student leader with us. Um, just kind of a traditional or kind of somewhat typical path that people take because I can imagine that you're thinking, wow, there's a lot of things that y'all do and it sounds like kind of complex to get involved. So we just wanted to kind of go deeper into a more specific student and how she got involved in the program. So Haley actually first learned about venture as a first year student when she participated in what we call a mobile program. So that's a team building program that you might experience as well with an academic class or a group. Um, so she kind of experienced that. Those are typically about hour and a half long programs that really just work on breaking the ice with groups and starting to build again that trust and teamwork and camaraderie um, within the group. So she just kind of got interested in the facilitation side of just seeing the positive impact that that program had on her team. So she then, after kind of getting, having her interest peaked about the program, um, she enrolled in our Volt Foundations um, program, like Kelly mentioned, which is again, the non-credit bearing. So that one's the co-curricular version um, that meets once a week in the evenings and also has a um, typically a, a trip or an all day um, uh, program involvement to it. And she did that during her, the fall of her sophomore year. So she successfully passed through the Volt Foundations program um, she, and then she also decided to stay on as a Volt. It's kind of, we think of it almost as a two-way interview process because sometimes students come in and they have an idea about what we are. And then through learning us, about us over the semester, they're like, okay, I'm, that's, I'm glad I did it, but I'm not necessarily, it might not be right for me. So we still give students the opportunity to make that choice. Um, but Haley definitely decided to stick with it. And she then took the challenge course facilitation class in the spring of her sophomore year. And that class is really the leadership level. So not only are we getting students out on the course, but also saying, okay, now you've experienced being a participant on the course. Now let's talk about what it's like to actually lead it and to bring a group of brand new people up on the ropes course to facilitate that program safely and also to help the group process their experience because that's a big aspect of experiential education is that reflection piece. So she became trained as a facilitator and then by the end of her sophomore year, she was ready to facilitate. So starting with you know, some programs that summer and then for two full years after that, um, she was really one of our go-to facilitators in the challenge course. Um, she was able to work um, significantly, I think first as a facilitator, maybe about, um, you know, maybe about six to 10 hours per week as a facilitator, but then she actually became a, uh, a manager on the challenge course. We have um, internship positions that are actually 10 to 15 hours per week. So Haley eventually ascended up to that role where she was actually coordinating um, her peers in kind of staffing and designing challenge course programs. So definitely a lot of leadership both on the course as well as some of the administrative side in designing and um, staffing these courses. Um, so, so then Haley has now successfully graduated from UNC Charlotte as an undergrad. She's actually still around as a, as a grad student. So if you wanna double check anything that I said, the veracity of it, you can, uh, you can find her on campus. She works in housing and residence life as a graduate assistant right now. Awesome. Haley's wonderful. If you ever see her around, you should definitely ask her about her time with Venture. She always speaks highly of it. I, I've always heard her speak highly of it. Um, so we hope you are excited to get involved and hope the, hopefully the experiences and opportunities we've talked about have kind of gotten ready for school um, and gotten ready for you, gotten you ready to get involved. So if you're asking yourself what can you do right now to get involved and stay informed on what's happening this semester, especially like Brian said, given the pandemic that's happening, the best way uh, to get involved is either email us at venturedept at uncc.edu. You can also find us on Instagram at Facebook at VentureUNCC. Also, I encourage you to go on our website, which is venture.uncc.edu. On the right-hand side of the screen, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a green button that says join our email list. I'd encourage you to get on that. It's a quick Google form to get on our email list, and we'll shoot you updates as we have them. Um, yeah, so that's the end of our, our presentation. So if there are any questions, uh, we'd love to take those. Yeah, if you have questions, if you want to put them in the Q&A function.
No questions. Well, I can ask you a question while we wait for them to make questions. <laughs> sure. What uh, What is y'all's favorite part about venture? Nice. Yeah, I think for me, just to jump in, of course, I'm sure Kelly could immediately jump in too with a bunch of things. Yeah, you know, I'm just something that I've always been really passionate about with the outdoors, um, but really sharing the outdoors with others and just seeing that growth that happens. Um, you know, experiential education, being able to actually do the things that you're talking about and say you're interested in to be able to to do them and engage with them and I think being in the outdoors has a natural just inspiration about it um, so so yeah I think just seeing whether it be a participant who just wants to try a new activity or someone who's been a leader with us for years seeing how how they grow through their experience is really just what makes it awesome for me yeah and I think from my point of view from the challenge, more challenge course side I think kind of similar to what Brian said is seeing both groups grow. So from a facilitator standpoint, seeing how the groups grow from, you know, either just meeting or, you know, maybe they live together in a learning community. Um, and by the end of their one to four hour program, seeing the memories they've made and the trust they've built and the, the, the discussions they've had throughout their program and how that kind of changes them. And from the facilitator standpoint, I love seeing our student facilitators grow, try new things, test out new ideas and, and really take advantage of the opportunities they have at UNCC. Cool. Uh, we've done the course with our students before and it's a, it's a great experience. Um, so Hannah asked, um, Hannah Mae Elliott asked us, do you get paid to be a facilitator? Yes, you do. So Brian might be, I'm still relatively new to Venture. I started right before the pandemic. So I'm still learning a lot of these things, um, but Brian can maybe help. But yes, you do get paid to be a facilitator. You do go through the Intro to Outdoor Adventures or Volt Foundations course, and you get some additional training. And then Brian, if you wanna chat more, a little bit more about the hiring process after that. Sure, yeah, so our, each of our roles has its own set of competencies. So basically skills, skills, knowledge, and attitudes that are associated with that role. Um, so once you've gone through that initial training, the Volt Foundations or Intro to Outdoor Adventure, um, then you're actually ready to start to kind of specialize a little bit. So somebody might start out on the challenge course, um, but even Haley, for example, she ended up leading some, some day trips as well. But basically going through the activity specific training in that area um, is gonna be your next step. And then actually, having an opportunity that we call it apprentice program. So that means you're basically a volunteer, but who's also part of the leadership team. Um, and then that's like a great way, again, experientially to check off on those skills um, that you need. And then once, once um, a full-time staff member has been able to check you off on your skills, then we actually submit you for, um, for that um, payment as well for future programs that you facilitate. Cool, thank you. Um, David Miller asks us, will any version of Outdoor Soar be offered this year? I'm glad that you're interested in, in Outdoor Soar, Soar Outdoor. It is, so, so we have just this week actually made the decision to kind of change it. So we're actually, the short answer is no, um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't programs that we're going to be offering before the school year start that are really going to be helpful for incoming folks such as yourself to make those connections and get involved in the outdoors. Right now, we don't have them officially set yet, but we're looking at doing probably somewhere in the, in the neighborhood of three, four, five day um, trip, trip programs, which when I say day trip, that could also potentially be some on-campus programming on the, the, the uh, challenge course, um, socially distant, obviously. But, but yes, so we will be offering um, programs for incoming students that really is in the spirit of a SOAR Outdoor, which again, really the goal of that is to help students like yourself make those connections to their peers, to upperclassmen, student leaders, and to the university, um, and, and feel a, a greater sense of confidence going into the year. So that goal will still be able to be met just in a different format. And again, that's something that we will be having more official updates on um, pretty soon here as we get closer to August. And the one thing that's outside of Soar Outdoor is the Gold Rush Week, I guess they call it. Um, and so we do have a High Ropes open house Kind of experience that's going to happen during gold rush um so that's the week before classes i think cur the current date 
is I think September 5th in the afternoon. We're gonna have an open house. You have to sign up. So we're only allowing 10 people at a time to come out and, and just experience the ropes course. So that is definitely something that you can sign up for. I don't know if they've posted all of the details yet, but that will be on the Gold Rush website. I'm seeing a no from Jordan. So that yeah, will be coming. Uh, <laughs> we are currently coordinating all of that information and um, it should be available in early August. So um, but that's, that's great to know. So Gold Rush, um, for those of you who want that information, you can access that through our Niner Destination app. So there's a Gold Rush in year one launch guide which will include all the programs um, like Callie just mentioned, as well as um, some other online engagement stuff that you can do throughout August. Um, we don't have any other questions right now. What's the, Brian, so um, you, you're in charge of trips. What's the coolest trip that we've done at UNC Charlotte? <laughs> what was maybe the weirdest one? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> <laughs> well, I really, so, so one of our students actually, um, a few years ago, and, and she actually submitted a proposal that we put forward to the 40, 49er Family Fund, um, uh, basically to do a fall break um, backpacking program, as well as uh, a service program on the Appalachian Trail. So during that program, that was a three-day, two-night experience over fall break. Um, we left on Saturday so people could get that good night of sleep before, you know, finish your classes on Friday afternoon and then get a good night of sleep before hitting the trail. Um, but basically, we um, started at um, Carver's Gap on the Appalachian Trail, which is, um, you know, and then we hiked northbound on the AT for about 15 miles. And that passes through some of the most beautiful section of Appalachian Trail um, that there is <laughs> in uh, over 2000 miles because it's got all of these mountaintop bulbs. Um, and you can see, I've counted seven ridgelines to the north and seven ridgelines to the south from, from some of the points on the trail. Um, so you're just seeing that classic North Carolina and actually Tennessee um, landscape. And then at the end of that um, trip, we actually partnered with the Tennessee Eastman Hiking and Canoeing Club to do trail work on the same section of trail that we just passed over. So basically, you know, whenever someone hikes in the trail, you're slowly eroding the trail itself. So basically, that was a very literal way of giving back to the trail is actually rebuilding some of the trail that we had walked over. So um, students really got a lot out of that. And also, it was really, we're really grateful for the 49er Family Fund because we were able to make that a really low cost program. That actually, it was one of our most affordable programs as well. So yeah, definitely a program we're really proud of and, and the one that was student initiated. That's really cool. Um, don't have any other questions. Is there anything else that y'all, we haven't talked about that y'all want new students or new stu family members to know about Venture? Get involved. Whether it's with Venture and just participating in an activity or a trip, or you're part of another organization that comes out to uh, Venture, just make sure you're getting involved on campus. I know it's going to look different this semester and this year, but just be intentional about getting involved somewhere on campus and making those connections. Not only will it help you in, in school and finding that community and that support, but past college, when you're out of college, um, it will help you out a lot when you have those connections and it can potentially, like it happened to me, it can lead you on your career path. So just get involved some way, somehow, find something and do it. Yeah, and, and for, for us, I totally agree with what Callie said. I think that's definitely the biggest thing. Um, but then I, again, like knowing that, please don't be scared away by, you see someone on the challenge course, and like, ah, I, I don't know how I'm gonna do with heights. You know, I've never been up at 25, 30 feet before off the ground. Um, really, that is something that is, the, the technical skills can come through time, but the interpersonal skills, the maturity, the leadership, that's something that we feel like is very transferable to whatever department you get involved in. But if you want to do it in an outdoor context, then we uh, think we're a great fit for you. Great. Well, thank you all for all of that information. Um, I know we've still got a couple of participants, so I'm going to turn the recording on.